All right, well in this section, what we're going to do is look at an overview of section 10.1 uh, from the photosynthesis chapter. Now, it's worth taking a moment to uh, step back and look at sort of the relationship between photosynthesis and the major themes uh, in the course. Now, uh, emergent properties occur when individual units uh, work in concert with one another to do work that the individual uh, units themselves could not do. So photosynthesis is an excellent example of the idea of emergent properties because of the work done by a particular organelle within the cell, namely the chloroplast. So you have these individual components within the chloroplast working uh, together to carry out this process of creating uh, organic molecules. Now, uh, to get a sense of where this occurs, what we'll do is imagine taking a, a leaf, and lying it flat, and then ripping open an edge of the leaf and looking at, looking at it from the side or looking at sort of a, a cross-sectional view. So here's our leaf. And on the top side of the leaf, there will be a row of green uh, organelles here uh, called the chloroplasts. So uh, these cells are called uh, palisade mesophyll cells uh, because they arrange themselves in columns uh, up on the tops of the leaf to try and have the greatest concentration of uh, uh, chloroplasts. Uh, now that center section of the leaf is referred to as the mesophyll. This is uh, where you'll find uh, all the chloroplasts are involved in uh, photosynthesis. Easy to remember because meso means center, phil literally means leaf. So uh, you'll have cells that uh, along the top, you'll also have sort of a disorganized spongy mesophyll is what it's referred to as. And then there's another uh, important structure in this process called the stoma. Now, stoma literally translated means mouth. Uh, these actually look like a set of lips that can open up and uh, allow gases to enter the leaf. So uh, the gases involved uh, are gases that pass through the stomata, uh, in the case of photosynthesis, include the CO2 that will flow into uh, the mesophyll, and then the oxygen that flows out as a waste gas. Now water also flows out of here through transpiration, uh, but that is not of concern uh, to us as it relates uh, to photosynthesis. Now. What I'd like to do is look at one of these cells, blow it up, and imagine we're looking at only the chloroplasts uh, within one of these particular uh, cells. Now, uh, the chloroplast is a double membrane structure, uh, but that is not uh, particularly important to uh, our discussion at this point in time, but we'll just label this um, for future reference. So there is the... Uh, outer membrane and the inner membrane. Now the fluid, the viscous fluid within uh, the chloroplast is the stroma, which is significant because that is where sugars are made. So we'll get into details about what occurs there, but just uh, realize for now that the fluid portion of the chloroplast is where uh, sugars are actually assembled. Now a clear, clearly identifiable structure within the chloroplast itself are a series of green membranous structures. Uh, these membranes are referred to as thylakoids. And what's significant about thylakoids is that they contain chlorophyll, the green pigment uh, that plays a prominent role in the photosynthetic process. Now, uh, a stack of these thylakoid membranes will be referred to as a granum, or grana for plural, and 
within that thylakoid is an appropriately named thylakoid space. And that will take on uh, a greater role as we talk about the uh, reactions involved uh, in photosynthesis. So please do uh, take the time to familiarize yourself with the structures in the chloroplast and get a sense of uh, the events of uh, photosynthesis that occur uh, within each of these spaces or structures. Now, what I'd like to do is take a moment to now um, look at the reaction uh, overall. And if we do that, uh, I'd like to start by thinking about uh, the reactants involved in this uh, sugar making process. So photosynthesis, using light to create uh, sugars. So uh, light is obviously the energy source uh, for this uh, set of reactions. Uh, again, uh, photosynthesis is an anabolic process. You are building uh, a sugar molecule, so it's not going to be uh, spontaneous. It's going to require the input of energy, and again, uh, light, particularly from the sun, uh, oftentimes will provide uh, that energy source. Now, the reactants uh, include carbon dioxide. Think about what a plant needs. It's going to need to take in CO2, and it's going to need to take in water. Now, the products of photosynthesis include, of course, uh, glucose. Here's the generic equation. Here's Cho, carbon hydrogen oxygen is the generic equation uh, for carbohydrates. So you're going to get glucose and oxygen. Now, uh, this is a set of redox reactions. So, carbon dioxide is the molecule that uh, is reduced in this process. Uh, remember, uh, reduction is a gain uh, in electrons. So, uh, when carbon dioxide gets broken apart and rearranged, it will gain electrons. Now, uh, the electron source uh, for this process is actually water. So water is the molecule that is oxidized uh, during photosynthesis. Now, we have just a handful of atoms involved in this entire process, and it's important to figure out where the atoms get rearranged uh, and in what molecules of the uh, products do these atoms uh, enter. So. Some are sort of obvious. Here, carbon dioxide, it's the only carbon on the, this side of the equation. Here, carbon and glucose is the only carbon on the other side of the equation. So it's fairly self-evident that carbon dioxide is the carbon source uh, for sugars or for glucose. Uh, it's the same if we look at hydrogen. Hydrogen and water is the only hydrogen on the reactant side of the equation. So that hydrogen uh, works its way to uh, glucose uh, on the product side. So the big question becomes where do we get the oxygen for glucose uh, and the molecular oxygen that's released as a waste gas? Now uh, in the 1920s, 30s, uh, there was work done to try and uh, elucidate uh, the source of the oxygen uh, for glucose and molecular oxygen and what, was hap or what happened was that uh, heavy isotopes of oxygen were used to try and track the flow uh, of the oxygen molecules. And what they learned is that these heavy isotopes uh, of oxygen and water were actually released as a waste gas. So the isotopes, um, again, could be traced and seem to be released uh, as a waste gas. Then the oxygen from carbon dioxide wound up in glucose. So here you can see the atoms involved uh, and you can track uh, where those atoms wind up in the process. So please do take the time uh, to familiarize yourself uh, with the overall equation, track the flow of energy, track the flow of atoms, and uh, use that information to help sort of guide your understanding of the greater details that we'll look at uh, in the coming sections.